Hey everyone, NFI Hammer here. I had heard for a long time that Flayed Ones from the Necron Warhammer army was very difficult to complete, so I thought I would give it a go as a beginner and see how I went. Spoiler alert, it did not go very well. Anyway, let's get started. What you will need to build these is obviously the sprue. I got mine from the Warhammer Imperium magazine number 15, which was a restock recently in my hobby store. You need some clippers. These are from the paint tool set. Uh, this is a hobby knife. Don't use the hobby knife that comes with the paint tool set. Uh, some Citadel plastic glue or equivalent brand and some sandpaper. This is just to um, get some of the rough edges. So when I saw the sprue, I was already kind of panicking because I had no idea how many pieces are on here. And there's actually 50 unique um, sections. And some of these are so tiny and so brittle. Um, it looks like a nightmare. So because there's five units, there's 10 pieces per unit on average. And it's absolutely crazy. When I started clipping these off, I realized just how big a task this was going to be. So for people that are new to the channel, I've been in the hobby for just over a year now. And in that time, I've focused primarily on Necrons. And these little annoying <laughs> units are so frustrating to build. They're not push pin like the ones that you can get nowadays, but they kind of like you need to hold them into position and then glue them so it's kind of the worst of both and the pieces are just so small and so fiddly it's really easy to get the angle wrong and then it, when you glue them you, you can't unglue them and yeah it was really frustrating to put these together I think if these were the very first models that I was building, I would have probably given up on the hobby um, just because they were so frustrating. Um, so, and the other thing is each of these ones look quite different, like depending on where the flesh is placed, uh, they can kind of change how the model looks. And what I like about the Necrons is how they all like conform to each other and they're all kind of like the exact same. So with these flayed ones, because they're wearing the skin of their dead enemies, it means that they're kind of corrupted and they're kind of unique, but it means that each model, you have to kind of learn exactly how it's meant to look, how it's meant to position, which is cool. Like, don't get me wrong. I think they're super awesome looking and interesting units. But for a beginner, it's really, really challenging. And this took me way too much time. As you can see, I've sped it up, but it took me just hours just putting these ones together. For priming, I use the Rust-Oleum uh, Ultra Matte Black Primer. I recently saw on Facebook that people were making fun of people using this primer because it's too thick, but I find that it works really well for Necrons. I think with um, metallic paint, you really want the black primer. And I don't think it's too thick in that you can see the details, but if you have any suggestions, please let me know down below what I could use instead. I'm always looking for tips. So while I was filming this, a big gust of wind came and knocked all of these models off the table onto the ground. And it actually smacked off and broke some of the claws, just depending on where they landed. So you can see here, it, um, some of the claws have um, fallen off, but I didn't realize at the time. And then it rained, so I couldn't even find the claws and try and, you know, Frankenstein them back together. So just had to go with the fact that they're broken and kind of leading into that whole mutated deranged necron kind of thing and at least they're unique moving on to the painting phase i'm going to use the citadel base color wraith bone to paint in the flesh now i don't know if painting the flesh first really makes a lot of sense but for my mind, I really wanted to kind of see what damage I was dealing with here and sort of understand each of the model's unique, um, you know, configuration around where the flesh parts were. 
So these Necrons, you know, they murder their enemies like normal Necrons, but then because they kind of long to be, you know, physical beings again, they kind of cut the flesh off their enemies and like wear it on the skin. You know, it's rumored to be like a curse from a Catan before it died. There's some really interesting lore in it. Um, so I really like the idea of the Necrons, but at this point I was like, these look hideous like not in a good way hideous they just look really badly painted um so i thought i'd go on to the rune lord brass which is you know the shuriken dynasty bread and butter kind of colors and i've got a necron warrior there that i'm just using as like a reference um necron warrior was my second model that i ever painted and so i'm pretty familiar with like the color scheme for that and how i like to paint them but the, this Rune Lord Brass always takes such a long time to paint on these. I painted 20 warriors and everything and it just takes forever. Um, so I'm trying to like, you know, speed it up here. So as the, the Rune Lord Brass is getting added, more of the model, you know, is kind of coming to life and I can kind of see now a little bit better what I'm dealing with. Um, the color scheme is kind of very simple, so it's kind of um, not very complicated, which is good for beginners like myself. It just is time consuming. And so then I use Lead Belcher to represent any metal in the Necron that isn't really like an armor plating. So any sort of like arm, pistons, um, internal wiring, like the spine. So in my mind, like each of the metal has like properties and the colors kind of represent those properties. So again, this takes a bit of time, but it's definitely a lot quicker than the Rune Lord Brass. So for sort of indestructible Necron metal, I use Rhinox Hide, which is the really, you know, a brown color, but on the black priming, it kind of gives it like an interesting kind of I wouldn't say rust, but like, you know, very tough kind of metal look. And so I'm making the claws this color just because like their claws would be like the strongest metal because they're kind of a weapon. But it is a very subtle effect. Like you could probably just skip over this step if you didn't want to bother, or you could obviously paint them, you know, a silver color. So contrast paints is something I've only recently discovered and I've been using them to paint my Tyranid army so you can check out those videos there if you're interested um so i've decided to use this to try and paint the white wraithbone flesh into more of a leathery color because on the wing tyranid prime i used this on the wings and i thought it did do a pretty good job of conveying sort of like a leather tanned skin tone so that's what i'm doing here but i've watered it down because i was a bit scared of going too strong uh, but I think I went too far and I watered it down too much. So now I'm just going around the model um, and doing that. And then for the inside of the flesh um, would be like the blood. So, you know, when you cut skin off something, I'm assuming that the top layer is like what we see, but then the bottom layer would all be like, you know, blood vessels and guts and stuff. So I'm trying to get to the inside of this and I'm painting it with this Berserker's Blood Shade, um, just to try and give it a bit of a grotesque kind of, um, you know, horror vibe. But again, I've kind of watered it down a little bit too much and it's not really, you know, coming through. So I have to go back and apply multiple layers, just trying to build up that color palette. Um, but the thing I like about contrast paint is that it kind of pools naturally into shades and recesses and it's not really just that one color like you would get with like a base paint um, or a layer paint it kind of has a little bit of different tones in it which is really good for organic material because you know organic material isn't always you know exactly the same shade everywhere i also noticed that i had missed a few bits of flesh um, so I had to off camera go back and paint it Wraithbone just because like the flesh is really dotted all over the model. Now I'm using Druchi Violet. I thought that the flesh still looked a bit too clean 
because this is rotting, decay, decaying flesh that, you know, some purpley, you know, um, not mold, but like, you know, deteriorating death, decay flesh would, you know, have these patches of like rottenness. So I've just added a little bit of purple just in like some key areas. And then I also put it on the blood. So these guys are still Necrons. They still have the Necron sigil on the chest. So I'm just trying to highlight that sigil with gold. Um, I did a really bad job on the first one there, but I did a little bit better on the others. It doesn't really matter if you make too much of a mistake because you can always go back with a bat and black and touch it up or redo it completely if you <laughs> make a big mess like I did. This is a really subtle kind of effect probably don't really need to do it but I just thought for consistency. So Moot Green is like the Gore's energy but these Necrons don't have any Gore's weapons but their eyes I think look really cool if you do like this glowing green effect. They really do seem like you know zombie ghoul things which is like such a cool aesthetic which I haven't got to experience yet in my miniature painting hobby. Um, so yeah they definitely feel like they've like you know, awoken from a, you know, a grave and coming out to eat your brains. Um, and the green glowing eyes just really add to that. So moving on to the base thing now, um, that the models are mostly complete. I'm using this Astro Granite technical paint, but <laughs> I really don't see the value of this. It's kind of a bit boring. So I'm also adding some Martian Iron Crust, which I think creates a much more interesting texture. And I'm using two just to try and make the base look more varied rather than it just all being exactly the same. It's got kind of like, you know, an area of sort of flat ground and an area of more diverse terrain. Trying it out, not sure if it'll really work, but I've got some Storm Vermin Fur, which is a layer paint and I'm using a dry brush, but I'm not really doing any dry brushing technique. It's just a way for me to quickly get paint onto there and kind of work it into all the different crevices. And then I use Agrax Earthshade to try and get into some of those recesses created by the Martian Iron Crust. And then I, to make it alien and kind of otherworldly, I use a Phoenician purple dry brush just to kind of get the edges. And then I use a T'Challa Lilac one just to kind of get the very tips of them. And then just some boring PVA glue and try and, you know, stick these models on. And these models really are cursed because this took me such a long time. They kept falling off. One of the models only has like one feet or one foot, I guess, on the ground. And so it was really difficult to glue on and just kept falling. So yeah, these models just keep on causing pain. So I've got some different grass from a recent order of, um, from my game store. So I thought I'd try them on these models. I'm not really sold on this alien neon one. It looks a little bit silly, the purple and blue. Kind of regret putting it on, but the fire one looks quite good, I think. Um, kind of adds to that kind of destroyed environment. And now it's just cleaning up the rims of the bases. I find that this is a really simple step, but it makes the base look so much more professional and makes the, you know, the model really pop just by going around the rim and just painting it black. I think I've tried a few different colors, but black is just, you know, kind of draws the eye away and it kind of frames it. So I really do like that color. And now um, I wanted to do some edge highlighting on the claws because the Rhinox hide on the claws is quite dark it kind of isn't very easy to see um so i tried to do some edge highlighting but as you can see here my edge highlighting sucks like i either put too much paint on and it doesn't go along the edge or no paint comes off my brush so no matter what i do i can't really <laughs> get it right i found this was really difficult so if you've got any tips again feel free to leave them in the comments below um, and I kind of just ended up just doing a half ass job and just <laughs> getting something on it. And then the one, the model that kept falling off, I just was like, screw it. I'm just going to get some super glue and I'm going to just glue them on. There was also this kind of cool detached hand and this sort of spine 
thing with some skin stuck on it that kept falling off. So I just also super glued that. And yeah, I just ripped the foot off because I was putting so many layers of PVA glue on it and it wasn't working. So I just had to get the big guns. I haven't used super glue for like nine months. So these models have really regressed me um, to the point. But now this is the final product and they do look really awesome. Like it, I have such a love hate relationship or mixed feelings with these models. I think, you know, the lore, the look, the uniqueness is, you know, absolutely amazing. One of the more interesting Necron models I've ever painted, but at the same time, like just so fiddly, so detailed, so varied, um, using techniques that I'm not very good at, you know, and this makes them really difficult. So would I recommend these for beginners? Probably not. I think maybe, you know, leave these ones till last. You know, the other Necron models I've painted so far have been so much easier. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've made it this far, consider leaving a like or a subscribe. It really helps the channel out so much. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.